Oh, hi there. I'm back. Let's continue on. We're up to the uh, methods section of an ERA. Now, um, make sure that you put a heading of method, and then under the heading of method, there's three subheadings, and then under those subheadings, that's where the information goes. Okay, sometimes people stuff that up. So, this is heading, method, subheading, participants, and then you put information about the participants. Okay, so with the method section, that is where you'll be giving enough information so that the study can be replicated. Okay, with uh, experiments, we want to be able to replicate them so we can test if we'll get the same results. So the participants, um, you need to supply the specific information about those participants used in the sample. Okay, so you want to talk about information such as how did you actually obtain that sample? Was it through convenience, which is what we will usually use? Um, or if we're looking at another study, it might be random, stratified, random, stratified. Um, you want to talk about the number of participants, the gender breakdown, and perhaps even the age range as well. Uh, with the materials, you need to just simply write a list. Okay, you don't need to elaborate on that list. You just include everything in there. If there was a survey, you just include the title of the survey and that's it. You don't need to explain it. Um, if you need to actually give more information about something um, that is in your list, that actually goes in the appendix section. Okay, so that's where you would include your survey, in that section, not in the materials section. That's simply listing everything that you use to conduct your experiment. Uh, the procedure. This is probably the one that I find that most students have difficulty with because it really is a step-by-step -step, uh, account for what, what you did in the experiment. You have to break it down to every single step. Now this is when you're actually doing the experiment. When you're doing uh, preparation work, you don't include that in your procedure. This is how you conducted your experiment. Um, so, you need to talk about how the IV was manipulated. You need to talk about and explain exactly how the DV was measured. And you also mention the groups. Okay, so if you've got two or more groups, you mention all of them and you talk about how they all, um, the IV was being manipulated in each one. Uh, the other thing is here that I've made a point is that make sure that you refer to the re researchers is the term used for the people that conduct the experiment and participants the term used for the people involved. Okay, this is where sometimes students write I or the teacher or we. Okay, it is the researchers and the participants. Okay, the results section. The results section is where you state your results. Really important that word state. You're not interpreting them, you're not elaborating, uh, you are simply stating the results. Now you should be doing that in two ways. You should do that visually, so either as a graph, um, usually we'll use uh, a bar chart, that's most uh, common, um, or as a figure, which is also known as a table, so you might just have um, mean for group 1, 4.6, mean for group 2, uh, 5.2, so you can have it like that as well. Um, and then the last part of that is uh, a written, or the second part of that is a written statement. Now with the written statement, what you're doing is um, discussing what you can see in the graph or the figure. Simply discuss it, simply state what you can see. You don't go into interpreting it. That's what you do in the next section, which we'll show in the next clip.